This question asks about Lewis acid and bases. Remember, Lewis acid is a electron pair acceptor. A Lewis base is an electron pair donor. So you're going to be looking for what happens to the electron pairs. And because these are Lewis acids and bases, the best thing to do is to draw the Lewis structures for each thing. So if you did that, you'd say CO2 is going to be, well, and everybody has their own way of doing Lewis structures from first semester general chemistry. If you were with me, then you might recognize this method. So count up the number of valence electrons. So each carbon has four valence electrons. Each oxygen has six valence electrons, and there are two of them. Add them up, that's 16 valence electrons. Then go ahead and put the least electronegative atom in the center. Connect the other atoms with single bonds. Then sprinkle the remaining electrons around outside atoms first. until you have 16 electrons. You cannot put any more than 16 electrons in there. If you count these up, there are 16 electrons. Remember, each dash counts as two shared ele two electrons, two shared electrons. So that is 16. From there, uh, complete octets. Since the central carbon atom does not have octets, we're going to form double bonds. When you form double bonds, it doesn't matter which pair of electrons you share. Uh, and again, you don't even have to keep track of them. But in my little pictures, I like to. Yeah. And then the double bond, double bond. Oh. In that Lewis structure, each atom has an octet of electrons, which means that it satisfies the octet rule. And the octet rule rules for Lewis structures in general. Uh, so that's the carbon dioxide. Oxygen, or oxide ion, sorry, O2 minus, has uh, six valence electrons plus two electrons for charge. So we'll call them eight valence electrons. It's one thing and it has Uh, six, sorry, eight valence electrons around it. It should have a pair of brackets and a two minus, or if you remember, you can have a formal charge of minus two and just note it with a circle around it. Either of those are fine ways of designating uh, oxide. And what you can see if you then do the carbonate ion, which I'll do a little more quickly, uh, you'll end up with this. And we have a minus here and a minus there for formal charges. And I'm happy to talk about how to do these in more detail, especially if you come to office hours. And what you can see is that the carbon in carbonate has three oxygens bound to it, bonded to it. And that means that the oxide must donate a pair of electrons to form a bond with the central metal, uh, central uh, carbon. And we might draw that something like this. And again, you're going to do this if you take organic chemistry. So you're going to donate a pair of electrons there. Then it's going to move a pair of electrons there. And that's how you end up with a carbonate ion. And so now we just have to look at which answer says that. So, and oh, so the thing that donated the pair of electrons was the oxide. So that's going to be the base. The acid or the Lewis acid accepted a pair of electrons. And let's see. So I see O2 is the Lewis base because it accepts protons. No, wrong. Um, CO2 is the Lewis base. So yeah, CO2 is the Lewis acid because it accepts electrons. O2 minus oxide is the Lewis base. There we go. We have found which one it is.